previously on the Mike Knox show. Right? What he said, what he said how he said it, how Roman wasn't paying him no attention. Right? Roman wasn't paying him, Jay wasn't paying him no attention. But Paul Heyman was. But we're going to debt that. All right? We're going we gonna to get into some, some real wrestling shit. Right? I can say that. Sorry, Fox Sports. I know this is on, on the site today. All right? We got big things here. When you have the show the pros listen to because you want them to come listen to you, you can do that. All right? And I got to say thank you to, 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 to everybody who follows the Mike Knox show. And most importantly, this man right here is about to come on the show because it's been a while since I've done this. And I reached out. Some of you talking this way. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna play a little wrestling conversation, people, here in the barbershop. Where barbershop talk meets radio, okay? Let's just do what we do best. Let's stand on our feet. Former NFL player. Former. You're, he's, what do you mean former? He still is. The hottest free agent in wrestling, okay? We gonna find it the MLW. Is it TNA? Everywhere I turn right now, this man's face is dead. He wants to say, you know, who he is. Let's let him tell you who he is. Let's just stand on your feet right now. For my man, hey, Jay Francis. My man, welcome to the program, buddy. How you doing today? What up, man? Ain't them grapes, I see. Who hotter? <laughs> Come on, man. What's going on? I see you out there lounging, chilling, enjoying the weather. So, thank you for joining the program today, my guy. Um, thank you for having me, bro. Listen, before we go ahead and get this thing started, all right, for anything ever gets started right now, I, I'm watching these videos. You know what I mean? I'm watching these things, and I, and I got to say, before I get anything about you, I got to say one thing I saw about you I got to make fun of, right? I'm an Eagles fan. So y'all had to lose the Super Bowl, okay? I ain't never cheated against y'all in my life until this. You'll come in my stadium with your all black on. <laughs> that was disrespectful, all right? That was disrespectful, all right? Y'all had prime time. You had Terrell Owens. You, you, you're great. F them Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? I got a Cowboy producer backstage. He knows how I feel about them. And he's from D.C. So that means he's a sports terrorist. Okay? <laughs> but we ain't going to talk about that, right? But I had to get on you about that, man. You, are, you, are you over your team losing? Uh, all my teams lost. <laughs> Every, my teams be whoever cut me a check. You know what I'm saying? They all lost. I ain't played for the Chiefs. I ain't played for the 49ers. So I'm over all of them losing. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I tell you this, what's not losing is you right now in this wrestling business right now, okay? So we all know the story, where you came from, that release. Listen, I, I'm a fan of, you know, everything can be what it is for a reason. Look at Drew McIntyre. Everybody goes through ups and downs in companies. It's management. We, we don't know what the hell's going on. I'm not even going to ask you what the hell happened. I ain't none of my business. I ain't concerned. I'm concerned about where you are now. Good, because I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's even more fucked up. Okay, how you ain't gonna know what happened? Yeah, I don't know. I showed up to work, worked my ass off, did extra ring work, uh, wrote promos for people, wrote songs for people, did all the stuff. You know, I, I don't know what happened. Well, they're lost. Okay, you ain't wrong. You okay. ain't wrong. And, and, and what's gonna happen is, is later on when you make this name for yourself, okay, because you got a following first and foremost. Okay, you got. Let me just say this. You got the black contingent behind you, mm. okay? And, and, and this, ain't, this ain't 1998 where we got to stay in a box, okay? We loud right now, mm -hmm. okay? So and, and, and you, we can see you working on your craft and, and getting better at things you do. The one thing you've never been shaky on, at least in my opinion, I'm going to just stamp that approval right here, is the biggest thing in wrestling to me is storyline. And it's can you, can I, when I see you on my screen, am I believing who I'm looking at? Yeah. And, 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 and when you got that, I think you're on top of that. So what did this, how did, when you got out of football into wrestling, was this all your idea, your character? Or did somebody put this in, for, in front of you? Nah, so when I was 23, I started shaving my head, right? And ball um, game. And ball game. And uh, then I forget what year, I want to say it was 2018, the movie Straight Out of Compton came out, right? Okay. Yeah. And Suge Knight in that movie is very, very Suge-esque. He's just like Suge in the real world. Yeah. But the thing is, I look more like the brother that played Suge in the movie. You do. Than I do like Suge. Right. Right? So, I mean, they're going to say me and you look alike because we ball with a beard. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so, <laughs> well, I got it. So I, I still do look like Suge. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. 
everywhere I would go, when I would wear red, people would ask me, am I should night? And I'm and I'd be like, that brother is 50 and in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, but everywhere I go, I had a red car. People would look at me weird when I got out the car, like, yo, is that should? So when I first started wrestling in 2018, late 2018, early 2019, I had a character, and my first wrestling character was named Sugar Bear. And my crew was called the row okay so uh, fast, that story, forward, <laughs> five, fast forward two years later i'm in wwe a uh, year and a half later i'm in wwe and i'm top dollar in hit row but mm -hmm. it's still the same thing it's still a wrestling music conglomerate yeah um nobody's ever and there's a lot of people that can't say this but nobody's ever wrote a line for me Right. Everything I've ever said was mine. Um, a lot of other people, the things that they said were mine. And are they able to still use Hit Row or The Row? Is uh, that theirs now? I mean, or I could use The Row, but I honestly, I'm at the point now where it's like, I don't need it. Okay. Like, where I'm at now. So, I'm really deep and involved with character work in wrestling. Okay. The character that I'm working now in TNA and all across is yeah. this this second level, this AJ Francis character, is was always the next evolution of the top dollar character. The anyway. top dollar comes in, he's a rapper, he's an enforcer, mm -hmm. he's part now of he's the, the crew. boss. Now he's a boss. Now he's buying his own airtime on TNA. Yeah. yeah. Now he's buying his time on commentary. Now he's buying his own camera crew to film his <laughs> spots backstage. Like these were, this was always the next step. Yeah. The only problem is the first step never really got off the ground because it never got a chance, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm doing something different and it's just me. Like I, even All when I got released from WWE the first time, Yeah. Tahuti and Brianna got released too. And I would tell promotions, because to be honest with you, I don't need to wrestle for money. Okay. Just being real with you. Let's get so it. I would tell promotions if you're not bringing in Tahuti and Brianna, I'm not coming. You you can't okay. just bring me in. Gotcha. Right. But now they still in WWE and I'm doing my own thing. So now mm -hmm. that's why you see me everywhere. Since right. I was released, I've been on ESPN four times. <laughs> I've been on TMZ. I've been on ABC twice. I've been on Fox twice. I've been on ES uh Run NBC it. twice. Run it. Zero of those times were from a wrestling company or another person. Okay. Th those were all my personal phone calls. Hey, buddy, I'm Run in it. town. Let Run me it. pull up. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody else in wrestling can do that. And the only person that's been on Pat McAfee's show more than me is Roman Reigns. <laughs> so let's call it like it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, call it. I got a different level of access and a different level of celebrity that I can bring to these other companies. It wasn't appreciated in WWE. And quite frankly, they don't need it. They can set it up for these other guys themselves. They can put these guys who don't have that access in that position because they're WWE. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but having, like, but, but, but having that myself. though, but having that AJ, having them do it and then having you have the character that does it, I uh -huh. think is a, is a bigger thing. Not to interrupt is. you, I just, okay. It is. You're absolutely right. And I recognize that. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I recognize that. But these other guys, they, they don't recognize it. Who, who are some of the ones you that you wrote for there? There's a Bro, question I, I had there. Like, I ain't going to put in people's business out there. But just know there's not a lot of people in the locker room that I didn't help put together there. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> gotcha. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, but I, I I I like what you're doing with that and the next evolution because as you're as you're speaking it right, you know we all I'm, I'm in wrestling talk here. You know what I mean? Whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, you know what I'm saying. And my character was the million dollar thug, and I, and one of my things I've always thought that it was good that wrestling never had, and why I always have a issue in wrestling, and in, in, in WWE, and in no matter where you are, frankly. If you have a black character and it's unbelievable or it's 100% stereotypical uh, in a negative tone kind of way, like it has to be beneath whatever else is there. I've always thought, like, why couldn't, um, uh, what's my guy you had uh, from the, the Nexus, the lawyer, David Otunga? David why, couldn't he, why couldn't David Otunga get over? He's a Harvard graduate. You know what I mean? But you had, you had Christopher Nowitzki that could get over, but not that. Another problem, 
you gotta understand is that like people think when I'm pl- doing the rapper character in wrestling that it's me playing a character. But before I ever got to WWE, I had three albums. I went on tour and did shows with KRS One and the Ghetto Boys. I did the Super Bowl song for the Kansas City Chiefs in 2021. Like this is all before I ever got on TV as Top Dollar. So like, do a little research. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not playing a character. This is who I really am. The problem is in wrestling because the crossover, the Venn diagram of hip hop fans and wrestling fans the middle part is mostly just black wrestling fans, Mm -hmm. right? So like a lot of wrestling fans, when they think hip hop, they think, yo, 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 I'm here to say, it's my time and it's my day. They better stop thinking that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like they don't get real hip hop. Like Bun B, hip hop legend, got Chill Burger's hat on now. Mm. He's done videos with me because he loves what I do. DJ Who Kid, hip hop legend, loves what I do. Nipsey Hussle followed me. The first, you know, people talk about my Friday rap videos that I was doing every week. The right. first one I ever did was on Right Handed God by Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle followed me and said, the reason why I kept doing it is because Nipsey Hussle himself told me, yo, you got something here. Keep going. So like, then where do you, you want to take this wrestling thing to? You got this. You can do that. We, we You got the connections. So you don't need certain things. So you can pay or, or so I say, forge your own story. Mm-hmm. So you got the doing. MLW thing coming up in two in, in 10 days. And I got MLW. Go, I got NWA. I got TNA. I'm going you, everywhere. <laughs> you go going everywhere. everywhere. I have a point so, to prove. My name okay. was dragged through the mud maliciously with mm. intent. And I have a problem with that. So okay. now I have a point to prove. I'm going to prove that I'm the biggest star in wrestling. Matt Cardona is supposed to be the indie god, right? Well, yeah. go look at his Twitter. See, the most interactions he got in the last week is him talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, when if you go look at NWA and uh, MLW and TNA, three great companies, mm-hmm. their biggest videos for the last week got this face in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am on a worldwide takeover. I have a point to prove, and I'm tired of people pretending I'm not that guy when I am that guy. So... You're hitting all these promotions up. So you're so you're you're aiming to try to get titles in every company or just go there and show them that you're a bigger boss to Bro. their federation than they than if their they're biggest sm- boss. If they're smart enough to give me an opportunity to be a champion, I'll be the best champion they ever had. Okay. If they but here's the thing, I don't need a title. I don't I don't need a title. I, I never needed a title. I can stand here with a microphone and make you care. I don't need to have plastic <laughs> on my shoulder for you to care about me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can do it right here. I don't need that. Now, I can do a lot with that, but I don't need it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I would love to get a Viper title. Viper never had it. To Razor Ramon, Scott Hall never had it. Never had it. Friend of the program, rest in peace. You know what I'm had saying? Had him on this show as well. Yeah. Um, question from the from the audience real fast. It's also off topic a little bit in the sense of, so is AEW in there? Man, if they make a call. Okay. The thing is, it's like, I'll, one thing about me. Well, you say you know, can make the certain calls. Right? I know my. Is yeah, that somewhere you want to be? I know my worth, bro. Okay, so you. Want I know what I you. can bring to the table. Gotcha. So if you want to act like you don't see everything that I'm doing, then don't call me. But if you want somebody that can bring eyes to your yeah. product yeah. and have people care about you, you know where I'm at, man. You I got a lot Joe of friends over there. Got to put Joe in his place. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put Joe in his place. <laughs> and that's another one. Joe Hendry, perfect example. Great talent. He's worked with some of the best people. Joe Hendry's never been hotter than he is right now. And why do you think that is? Because he got AJ <laughs> Francis top dog. Listen, the, on, promo, the promo the promo in the crib, I ain't going to front, right? I was like, okay. I ain't going to lie. Let's say could join the program. I'm not a slice throughout. I, I don't, I'm, just, I'm just me. I'm just Mike Knox. I don't give a fuck. All right, there it is. I thought that shit was fire. <laughs> okay. Oh, you talking about that MLW jump? Yes. I thought the MLW yeah. jump was fire. The way he was speaking to him, right? You in the whole T'Challa, that yeah. thing. I, I, th- I thought I thought they had. So what yeah. is what is the end game? Is they would say. Before you before you can when you can snap your fingers and go back, 
Is that where you want to be? Because I have a, a, a think belief that everybody wants to main event or at least do WrestleMania. Absolutely. I mean, the day after I got released, I talked to Hunter, and I still talk to Hunter. I talked to Hunter last week because uh, I was in Vegas, and I told him I was coming to uh, – because uh, I was in Vegas because I had access at the Super Bowl, and mm -hmm. I was doing Super Bowl media. I and uh, <laughs> And uh, – I was, was already everywhere. in Vegas when they announced that they were going to do the public yeah. event in Vegas. And uh, I would text Hunter. I was like, yo, I'm going to come because I just want to see what happens. But I'm not going to be there causing a scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to be there trying to make people look at me and know that I'm in there. I'm just coming as a fan to just see what happens with The Rock. Like, The Rock's the reason I'm still here in wrestling, right? The Rock is the reason I started yeah, uh, loving and never stop loving wrestling. What is your your mic skills be killing it? Yeah, okay, like the, you're you're getting. I learned from Dwayne. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I learned from. Dwayne I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we joke and say Dwayne, but all we say is disrespectful. He's the rock to us. I don't know that man. <laughs> you can call him Dwayne. Okay. Yeah. First yeah. of all, that's that's. <laughs> um, yeah. That's but how like, you learn. But like, but like the even the promo of the MLW promo is like. Like, I can do it different. Like, how many how many people in wrestling even know who Huey P. Newton is? I mean, they should, but <laughs> you're right. In wrestling, and that's why I say they need something like you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's something that we don't get often. It's the ones we get is few. It's a reason why, with all the respect towards Dwayne, mm -hmm. right? The Rock. I'm not that guy, but there's a contingent that says they didn't want to count him as the first black champion. Not because of The Rock. It's because the company only portrays the, the Samoan side the most. They don't really harp on, on that. So when, 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 when Kofi won, it was so much bigger to people because he represents. We can see it. That's what they're giving us a story to tell. Because So your story is to get there, to get hyped, go through these promotions, run ragged it, know your worth, and get paid. And look, here's the thing. I would love to main event WrestleMania. But... If they don't want me, they're not the only place I can make money. Of course. <laughs> so, like, I've proven, my even in the short two months that I've been on the indies, I've proven my ability and I've proven that I must stand above the shoulders of everyone else's talent. Right? I haven't even had a match in TNA. And people are telling me, yo, you are killing it in TNA. i seen the comments on this. <laughs> yeah. I, I ain't even had a match yet. Wait till yeah. you see me actually have a match. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait till then. Because the big knock, I've never, even in WWE, I only had two solo matches, and both of them was three minutes long. Now, if you go watch them, one's versus Ricochet, one's versus LA Knight. They're both really dope, but they're three-minute matches. Like, right. I had a, my first match back on the indies, I had a 20-minute main event at CCW in Hialeah, and it was the biggest show they ever had, packed to the brim with people. Why? Because I was in the main event. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm gonna show you. You don't believe it? I'm gonna show you. Don't and then believe after it, I show just you, watch. Yeah, just watch. <laughs> after I show you, you're gonna see that you've been faking and you've been hating this whole time, and I'm him. So are are you prefer to play heel or face? Which one is him? Heel. Who is him? Heel. Heel. I'm a heel. And the reason okay. I'm a heel is because not just because I can talk better than 99.9% .9 of humans on earth. But because on top of that, I'm big as hell. Like, <laughs> baby facers are supposed to get sympathy. Yeah. Like, if I'm in a match you, you with... Can't, you can't get sympathy unless you're, unless you're out here... Unless I'm facing Omos. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I'm facing Omos or Brock Lesnar or Bobby Lashley, all right, cool. But for every one of those guys, there's 10,000 other wrestlers that I'm way bigger than. Yeah. Right. You did an episode of Hidden Treasures. How you come mm -hmm. across that? How'd you like that? Uh, yeah, I hosted the whole first season. I came across it because I had done television for 10 years before I got to WWE. Okay. So one person that I actually did work with uh, was just in casual conversation with one of the associate producers of the show. And it was right during COVID and they couldn't like bring people in to interview for the gig. So they were like, he just said, yo, you should check out my guy. He just signed with WWE. So she looked on my social media 
and saw all the stuff I did and looked up my background and realized I had hosted television shows already on 10 different networks. So then she pitches me to the production team. The production team pitches me to the network. The network pitches me to WWE and WWE is like, well, actually, we don't want you to use him because he hasn't been on TV yet. Wow. Right? And then A&E was like, well, actually, we got final say and this is who we're going to use. Nice. So, and that's why it's so funny because some of the early heat that I would get in the performance center is people thought that I was handpicked by WWE to do these shows when in actuality, they didn't even want me to do them. So that's the standout star that other people see that you're, that you looking at like, okay, you don't see this. Do you think that was because of the power that was in control then versus now? Um, Honestly, I don't know. I just think they was hating. Like, <laughs> like I really, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it's not, I was overqualified for the job. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine, imagine having somebody in your organization that has hosted television shows on ABC, NBC, ESPN, Fox, FS1, NFL Network, um, Vice, uh, what else? Uh, um, NBC Sports, uh, uh, CBS Sports. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then they come to you and they say, yo, we want this guy with all this experience doing this exact gig that you need someone to do to host this show. And then they're like, mm, I don't think so. Like, what, if, what, what else am I supposed to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. know how it is. Brother in America, you got to work twice as hard to get half as far. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to name out some of them other whack-ass podcast hosts, but y'all know who you are because you're a different color than me and you're in New York City. But it's okay. I digress. I know I only got you for a little bit more time, so just uh, another question that came across in the chat and everything else is, we know where you've been. We know where you're trying to go. Do you see yourself crossing paths with you-know-who, Mr. Swerve Strickland? And if so... If the money, right? I mean, Swerve got to work some with or go, uh, to go To work with or to go after? Nah, if me and Swerve gonna do something, it's gonna be against each other. Okay. It's too much money. It's too much money in that, and I'm not playing second banana to nobody anymore. So <laughs> I'm tired of writing everybody's promos and then everybody pretending that I'm the backup dancer. It's not gonna happen. Ooh, you're so people out here with Milli Vanilli in it. Yeah, so like I'm not finna. I'm the, we wrote the we we did the hit row song. We I wrote the song. We recorded it in my house. I engineered it. My producer made the beat. I mastered the song. We did all that in my house. I'm the act. There's plaques on my wall right here. Like I'm. This is not a game to me. So like, I, I see the fish tank. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like really out here. I'm really yeah. out here. So like, I, I'm really him. Like I keep telling y'all. So like, I'm not. I loved my time in Hit Row, and I yeah. loved Tahuti, and I loved Brianna. You know what I'm saying? Like I love my time with these guys, but it's like. I'm me now. I'm just me now. That's why I'm coming out as AJ Francis. You want to know why I didn't come up with another name like High Currency or like, yeah, I still call myself Dollar because you can't yeah. trademark Dollar, right? Right. You know? No. But how like, about that? <laughs> how about that? You can't trademark a dollar sign. How about that? Right. So, uh, but like, I still call myself that, but like, I go as AJ Francis. And you want to know why? Because when you Google AJ Francis, cool shit comes up that has nothing to do with wrestling. I like that. I like that. Um, I know I gotta let you go. Rapping or wrestling? Last question, and then after that, what you listen to on your headphones right now? Um, honestly, it dep that's a hard question because like they're so different. Rapping or wrestling? Like wrestling is more fun to perform. Okay, but I think of raps in my sleep. You see what I'm saying? So it's like. Yeah. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and write something down so I won't forget it. You know what I'm saying? And I do that with wrestling too. A spot, a uh, idea yeah. for a promo. Like, I do that too. But actual performance, wrestling. Yeah. You, I get to be a super villain. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all my, it's rap, it's football, it's acting, it's all of the things that I've done at a high level my entire life all combined into one. Um, so wrestling. But 
what I'm listening to right now is that is that we outside, man. My new single, we outside. My interest music. It's yeah, a new yeah. year. We outside. Also listening to that God is Good album by Tez, which I also am an, am an executive producer on that project. We okay. also recorded that project in my house. Um, so it's like, you know, it's I got a lot of things there. Outside of them, I'm listening to that new Glorilla. Yeah, Glow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Glow. Yeah. There it is. There it Glow is. Said, Listen, Glow, guys. I felt her in my heart. Glow said, before I let you play with me, I'll go eat some jail food. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanna play with me? I'll go sit down and do a do a do a couple hours before I get bailed out. But you talk me crazy. <laughs> Listen, y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead and catch up my man Top Dolly. Y'all know where he is on every single social media and every wrestling promotion you can think of. He's on his way to the top back. Well, shit, he never left the top. He's still there because that's top dollar. That ain't Jay Francis. I'm not a rapper, though, but he inspired me. So listen, my man, I appreciate you coming on, my guy. Much respect, much love, y'all. We'll be right, right back here on Unpump Reviews, the Mike Knox Show, y'all. We'll be right back.